Welcome to the 2022 Grodin Alpern Awards. And extra excitement that we're here in person with each other to celebrate tonight. Absolute pleasure. Seeing familiar faces that we've missed the last couple of years, but here together again, we have some 400 of us here in attendance tonight. A record attendance. Great to see, and amongst us, 50 of our ILR students coming down from Ithaca on the bus to be here with us tonight. So a big round of applause for ILR students. I want to do a few shout outs to some special individuals here tonight. Up at the front here, I want to shout out to Jerry Alpern, ILR class of 1949, namesake. Great to see Jerry here tonight. I believe, I'm Alex Colvin, I'm the current dean of the ILR school, but there are, there are three former deans here tonight. So we have Ed Lawler, former dean, Her Harry Katz, Woo! and Kevin Halleck, Mr. Halleck there. Now, at this point in the evening, we normally give a shout out to all the Groden Alpern winners. I want to give applause to all the previous Groden Alpern winners. But we want to do a special shout out to the Groden Alpern winners from the previous two years, from 2020 and 2021, who unfortunately because of the hiatus, because of the pandemic, we didn't get to do this type of celebration for them. So I do want to call them up. Uh, we've got a couple of them here. Barry and John, could you make your way up here? Barry Beck and uh, John Bickerman. So the last two years, the winners, um, a couple of them unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. Uh, Mary Millman, class of 78, who continues to do excellent work in real estate, and Kathleen Westlock, MIR class of 83, also couldn't be here, but now the chief people and culture officer at Pep Boys in Philadelphia. Uh, Barry Beck, class of 90, busy with entrepreneurial ventures, got a whole new venture. And John Bickerman, class of 78, MS80, continues this successful practice in dispute resolution. So please join me in congratulating them. All right, and now on to tonight's honorees. We're going to start with the Alpern Award. So the Jerome Alpern Award, established in 1997, named in honor of Jerome Alpern, 1940, class of 49, whose contributions of outstanding service and support to the ILR school, its students and its alumni, combined with his professional accomplishments outside the field of industrial relations, embody the essence and spirit of the Alpern Award. So, it's my great pleasure to announce this year's Jerome Alpern Award winner going to Russell Hernandez, ILR class of 1988. That's all. Now, just explain to Russell that he's got to stand there, which is hard for him to stand there, and he's got to listen to some nice stuff about him. Russell, uh, for those of you who don't know him, I know many of you do know him very well. Uh, Russell currently serves as the president of Atlantic State Development, a prominent real estate development and property management company that he founded in 2006. Over the years, Russell has owned, developed, and operated and partnered in 13 New York City area hotels and restaurants. As is evidenced by the applause, Russell's Rolodex has reached legendary status. And I think 
Those who know Russell, it, it's attributed to his reputation as a generous, kind, hardworking person. He's a guy who treats people with respect, appreciation, and compassion, regardless of who they are. And that's who Russell is. Ru Russell's originally from the Bronx and Washington Heights. He's a loyal Yankees fan. <laughs> Yankees who start off the season well. I, I've got high hopes. I think they're, they've got a good shot of finishing second at the AL East behind my beloved Toronto Blue Jays. I think they'll do well. I think they do well this season. Uh, Russell, Russell, one of the things I think that's really admirable about Russell is he's a big believer in civic engagement. Uh, Following 9-11, he initiated and led the creation and implementation of the Office of Emergency Management in Pound Ridge, New York. He also serves on the Commission on Judicial Nomination for the State of New York. And for Cornell and ILR, he's been one of our most active alumni. He served on our Dean's Advisory Council, our Development Committee. He helped organize our 75th anniversary celebrations in the midst of the pandemic. He helped us secure our new property on 57th uh, Lexington. He's a guy who personally picks up the phone whenever we need it uh, and helps us out. I, I remember personally when I became Dean fall of uh, 2018, uh, I brought a bunch of students down on a bus from Ithaca. Uh, students, uh, don't worry about the story, it's a different time. 2018, they came down on a bus, sports summit, Everything's going great, and suddenly we started getting these weather emergency texts. Uh, turns out a storm's coming through Jersey, and the roads are getting icy, things are looking dire. The bus driver comes up to us and it's like, you know, I'm not driving back. We're not driving back. And I, I start sweating, panicking. I'm a new dean. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, what the heck? I've got these 50 students. What are we going to do? Within minutes, I turn around, and Russell has got on his phone. He's found hotel rooms, booked them out. He's got them all set up. He's got all the students a place to stay for the night. He took care of the situation. It's the kind of guy Russell is. He's the guy who helps people out. He's a loyal ILR, a loyal Cornelia. Um, but he's also, and I think this is fundamental to the man, he is a devoted family man. Um, he married his high school sweetheart, the lovely Alessandra. They have three wonderful children, all Cornelians. Gabriel, ILRE, class of 2017. Serena, human ecology, class of 2019. Daniel, graduating next month, going to be class of 22 from ILR. Pretty good. Two, out, two ILREs, one human ecology. Serena, maybe MILR, graduate school. Think about it. Just, just saying. Just saying. Look. Russell, uh, we are very fortunate that he's part of our community, part of our extended family. Uh, he's a wonderful person. On behalf of ILR, he's past, present, and future. You're a deep friend to us, and we love you, and we're so thankful for all you do. Congratulations on... All right. All right, it's the first time a lot of us have been out in public so everyone's having a good time. I hope everyone's having a great time. I didn't really write a speech because I do better not writing speeches. Um, I have to tell you guys, I'm so overwhelmed with my friends and the love and the support that I feel in this room. Everyone that I love and, support, and, and has supported me from the beginning is in this room. Um, my, my, in, my, in these notes though, my wife says, you must remember to breathe. So I have to like, I'm really honored to be, uh, to get this award. Uh, you know, Alex called me last year and if Teresa first called me, she said, Alex would like to have a call with you. And all I could think about was what did I do? I, I, and then I went to what did Daniel do? And I was like trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, it turns out, I even called Jennifer. I said, Jennifer, what's going on? She's like, you have to wait till you get the call from Alex. I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. Then Alex called me and, and, and gave me this amazing opportunity, and I really appreciate it. I want to congratulate David, who's being awarded tonight as well. I just want to go on the record with my mom that I had that in my speech to say to David, although she texted me today and she said, make sure you congratulate your fellow awardee. So 
uh, we're all on the same page. Um, I've always extended ILR as my family, right? That's been in every, any, any speech I've ever spoken, uh, made, or I've talked to anybody, ILR is an extended family to me. Alex has become a dear friend. Uh, Jennifer has always been a dear friend. Uh, and, uh, Jennifer has a lot to do with this tonight, by the way. Uh, Kevin Halleck, who was here before, one of my dearest friends. And, and then my professors, right? Professor Lipsky, Professor Katz is here, I saw him earlier. And, and these are the guys that made me who I am today. I mean, they really had a big impact on me. I remember I had this, this you know, I used to, I, a lot of people I'm sure in this room, don't deny it, have these dreams that I, I forgot to take a class or I wasn't gonna graduate or I forget, something was wrong. And I remember going to see Lipsky and I said, I screwed up, I never went to this class, I know. And he's like, what are you talking about? You're, you're fine. Back then there was no computers, you had to pull out a file. And he's like, dude, you're, you're, you're plenty fine. Anyway, these are guys who have been so influential in my life and have made me who I am today. My family, I am so fortunate. I have my dearest wife here tonight. Not dearest, my dear wife. <laughs> I have, I have, I have my, my three incredible children with me, Gabriel, Serena, and Daniel, who are everything I do, everything I do on a daily basis I do because of those four. Um, it's, it's so important to me. Uh, family is really important to me. So that in, in, by design, ILR, extended family, they're very important to me as well. And a little bonus tonight. I have my dad, I have my mom, I have my aunts, I have cousins that even if they're not my cousins, I'm calling my cousins. I have cousins. I have, co I have classmates here from Cornell. I have classmates here from Riverdale Country School. I, I, I'm just very, very lucky and I'm very, very happy. And, and I'm not going to mention all my friends could be here all night. A, couple of years, a few years ago we had a speech that went on forever, so I'm not going to do that with you guys. Um, ILR has been an important factor of my life, not just because of the friends I made, because some of my dearest friends today are my, my, my college roommate, uh, Pedro, and my college floor mate, my, my fraternity brothers, like Steve and Michael and Roland who are here tonight. Um, these, are, these, are, these are people that have been in my life forever and, will, and hopefully will always be in my life. And their children are in my, my children's lives now, right? It just, just extends, it just keeps on going. Um, I wasn't gonna go to Cornell. I was gonna go to like Syracuse or Vassar or one of these other schools. And, and my, mom, my mom's sister had this friend named Eddie Gonzalez who was in charge of the, um, the Cornell Extension. And Eddie met me in the Cornell Extension. They were on 23rd, 25th Street between 5th and Madison back then. And, and Eddie said, oh, you're going to Cornell. I'm like, there's not a chance of going to Cornell. I'm not, I'm not interested. And Eddie was really a big mentor for me to get to, to go to Cornell. And in my first year I got there, I'm like, what am I doing here? Which my kids have all had that same sentence with me. I'm like, why are we here? And, and by my, you know, and then you have, I hate to call it because it's so cliche, but we had the aha moment. And you're like, all right, cool. And I know why I'm here. And what, what's really happened after I got out of school is all the respect that I, when I say to someone I went to Cornell University, there's a lot of kudos, there's a lot of respect. And then on top of it, I was part of a development team that built all these hotels in New York, and I'm still building in New York. And, and I say I went to the ILR school, and then everyone just like, there's another level of respect, especially with all the union guys out here. I don't know what union guys are here. So there's, there's, it's very, very important. And it was really difficult when I got out at school, I built here in 90s and 2000s, and ILR got me out of a lot of trouble. Probably saved my life a couple of times as well, but it was really important uh, on it. Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm in this owner's rep business. I have this incredible uh, clientele that I have, and they're really, I, I can see the, the volume has gone up, so I'm boring everybody at this point. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. A few more minutes, a few more minutes and I'm done. So I, I, have this inc I, have these, I have these amazing friends and clients that I've made today, and I'm very fortunate of the people I'm with today, and, and, and I'm hoping my, my kids sort of, you know, get, get take advantage of those uh, relationships that I've made. Um, like like uh, Dean said, Dean Alex said, all three of my kids went to Cornell, which was like, to say that is so touching to me. You know, and everyone really respects that. And you guys are amazing, and I'm really proud of you guys that you guys did what you are to do. You still have a month left, so you're, you're almost there. 
the, the worst part of this whole thing is that my 10-year run of going up to school since Gabriel started at Cornell and now Daniel done in another month is coming to an end. And I, I, I went to the Statler Hotel and they said, oh, Mr. Hernandez, this is your 78th time here at the Statler Hotel. I was like, that's bad. But anyway, I will always be a part of ILR. I will always be part of Cornell. I will always be supportive in everything and anything that I need to do and help you guys, I'm there. Thank you much, everybody, very, very much for everything. I appreciate it. Congratulations to Russell. Now on to our second award of the evening. This is the Judge William B. Grote Award. Judge William B. Grote served as counsel to the New York State Joint Legislative Committee on Industrial Labor Relations, where he played a pivotal role in the founding of the ILR School and drafting his charter. The Grote Alumni Award was established in 1971 in honor of Judge Grote's vision and in tribute to his professional accomplishments, which accumulated an appointment as Justice of the New York State Supreme Court 11th Judicial District. It's my great pleasure to present this year's Grote Award to David Cohen, ILR Class of 73. Yes. <laughs> David um, has had a long and very successful career in the field of labor relations, bringing a skill and professionalism to his work that has won the admiration from many colleagues and has advanced the public interest. David, after leaving ILR, went on to earn his law degree at George Washington University in 1976, and then he stayed in DC for about 10 years, holding positions with the federal government and serving as chief hearing officer for the National Mediation Board. But then after that, he came back here to the New York City area and held a series of positions across the gamut of important labor relations aspects of this city area. He'd started as a consultant with Hay Group, but then went on to become director of labor relations for the Long Island Railroad and labor counsel for the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. A good reminder, if you're ever stuck on a train, the importance of people like David keeping those trains moving. He served, <laughs> served as, vice, as Assistant Vice President for Administration at Columbia University Medical Center, and then went on to the New York Police Department starting in 2006 as Assistant Commissioner of Labor Relations under then Commissioner Ray Kelly, and then was promoted to Deputy Commissioner and Labor Counsel. And most recently, he was Executive Deputy Commissioner for Administration for the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, where he's responsible for the full range of their HR and labor relations issues before retiring in June 2021. Now that's just the headline stories about his career in labor relations. Uh, but I want to convey the depth of David's professionalism, his experience, his knowledge in labor relations. I'm a labor relations scholar myself. Harry Katz and I have a little textbook in uh, collective bargaining and labor relations. And I will say, I have had an enormous pleasure over the years talking with David about labor relations, his knowledge, his experience, his depth of insight on labor relations is without par. I find him insightful, he has been informative to me, he influences how I teach the subject, and I know, talking to many of you, that he has had that same impact. He is respected widely across this city's labor relations community, and it's a pleasure to be honoring him for that amazing record of service. I want to talk a little about his family. Uh, David met his wife, Abby, also class of 1973 from arts and science, in an economics class. Uh, not what we necessarily tend economics class for, but we're very happy to find that love is found in the economics classes as well at Cornell University. 
They have two daughters who are also Cornell alumni, Ellen, arts and science class of 2002, and Lauren, arts and science class of 2008. They're a Cornell family through and through. David is known for having warned his children, if you do Cornell properly, it's for life. And they still came, so uh, we're really pleased that they decided to become part of the Cornell family. He's been a very loyal Cornellian and a very loyal R ILRI. He's been a member of our Dean's Advisory Council. He's a life member of the Cornell Council. He's Chair Emeritus of Cornell Hillel Board of Trustees, where he and his wife, Abby, were honored with a Tanner Prize for their service to the Jewish community in 2006. He has been both an exemplary professional, but a wonderful ILRE, a wonderful Cornellian. It's an incredible pleasure for me to be giving David the William Grote Award tonight. Congratulations. So the depth of knowledge means I have endless stories about labor relations. Um, but uh, welcome to Ithaca. I want to congratulate Alex for bringing Ithaca weather to New York City at the end of April. <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight to honor Russell, me, and the ILR School. After two plus years of COVID, we all need an opportunity to come together and to celebrate, and the Grote Alpern dinner is certainly a great occasion to do both of those things. It's good to have so many friends of ILR come together, and it's good to see Jerry Alpern here tonight as well. <laughs> I want to thank Dean Alex Colvin and the Selection Committee for this incredible honor. As you know, I am rarely speechless. When Alex called me, I was speechless. This is really a singular honor, and I'm so grateful to the school. I was in Ithaca last month teaching a couple of, couple of classes. Um, it's humbling to see the photographs of the previous winners outside of the dean's office, and I'm certain that Russell feels the same way about the Alpern winners who are across the hall from the Grote winners. I also want to thank the great ILR staff who put this evening together, and especially Jennifer Sellen, who worked so diligently with me. And I was a pain in the neck to her. With me here tonight are my wife, Abby, and our older daughter, Ellen, representing her family. Lauren couldn't be here tonight since she gave birth to our latest grandchild three weeks ago in Tel Aviv. But she is here in spirit. Also with us tonight are many relatives, friends, classmates, and colleagues. Thank you for being part of this evening. And I want to especially thank the union reps who are here tonight since I was a management rep, um, it really is singular to me to have so many union reps here. When I stepped out of my parents' car at the bottom of Live Slope 53 years ago, I could never have imagined the role that Cornell would play in my life. Almost the entire course of my life since then bears a Cornell imprint. As Alex mentioned, I met Abby in Economics 101, where she sat with the girls who wanted to take the course, and I sat with the boys who were there because it was a required course. Fortunately for me, it was an 11 a.m. class, and both groups got together for lunch at the Statler Cafeteria. The rest is history. And Abby's own storied career has allowed me the freedom to pursue my own path at every turn. And of course, both of our children graduated from Cornell as well. Ellen told me 
that they had to go to Cornell. They already owned all of the t-shirts. She also told me, when she was five years old, that labor relations was boring. Now, you have to understand that it was Christmas Eve. I was working at the Long Island Railroad. The drill for the day was you come in, you bring your daughter to work, you give, wish everybody happy holidays, you have lunch, and you go home. So I figured three hours piece of cake with a five-year-old. Um, unfortunately, one of the union reps came in to wish me a happy holiday and said, you know, it's too bad you couldn't do such and such. We could have made a deal. And I said, it's too bad you couldn't do such and such because we could have made a deal. He said to me, we could do that. I said to him, we could do that. We ended up bringing our committees together. We were there till about 6 or 7 p.m. Poor Ellen sat in the president's office watching cartoons on television while the committee was like down this long table in the office because it's never just those two issues as every negotiator knows. There's 20 other little things you've got to button down at the end. But there we were feeling good. It was three years of negotiations. We made the deal. Everybody on both sides was really happy. I gathered up Ellen to leave and she looked at me and, Daddy, labor relations is really boring. <laughs> it burst my bubble. But of course she was wrong. For the students out there, labor relations is great. I love labor relations. It is not boring. Ellen also claims to have taken calculus in Ives Hall. I have my doubts. I doubt that there was ever a calculus class in Ives Hall. And I know for certain that not a single ILRE ever stepped foot in that room during that period. I took collective bargaining with a young professor named Dave Lipsky. Through his class, I was selected to participate in negotiations as the note taker for the local school superintendent in deposit. And you all wave at deposit as you drive up on Route 17. I did two semesters of independent study, and Dave and I have remained friends literally for 50 years. And that independent study changed my life. Dave could not be here tonight, but we had dinner in Ithaca last month, and I told him that he would be thanked in my remarks. So I thank Professor Lipsky for pointing me down the path that has taken me through an interesting, challenging, and rewarding career, and for being my mentor and friend all of these years. I was also privileged to have had professors like Jean McKelvey, who got my first publication my uh, first uh, term paper was published in the Arbitration Journal. And of course, Milton Convitz, a legend in his own time, among the founding faculty members of ILR. Almost everyone needs to work and wants to work. The world of work today is unrecognizable from the world of work in 1973 when I graduated. The decline of unions, technology and globalization in general, and now COVID in particular, have redefined how we work. Legislative enactments have dramatically expanded employee rights and employer obligations. But the bottom line remains, what we used to call industrial democracy is still a necessary and vital part of what every worker should enjoy. Unions created the American middle class and the undermining of organized labor has contributed to income inequality and social unrest. Perhaps we're wish witnessing the rebirth of the American labor movement. I think this is a moment in time that won't come again, anytime soon. I've tried in my own work to represent an enlightened management dedicated to improving work and working conditions for employees. I've been fortunate to have had many unions willing to partner with me, and some of them are here tonight, 
and I've also been disappointed to have as many unions who are not quite willing to make the trip with me. I've had great bosses who taught me how to lead the right way, and bad bosses who taught me what not to do to the people who worked for me. Throughout all of these major changes, my ILR education has given me a lifelong set of tools to deal with change, disruption, crises, and even the occasional good news in the workplace. I've tried to repay my debt of gratitude to ILR over the years. I've been on the Dean's Advisory Council through Deans Ed Lawler, Dave Lipsky, Harry Katz, Kevin Halleck, and now Alex Col Colvin. I've guest lectured on campus many times. I've hired alumni. I've mentored students. I've sponsored faculty research, including several faculty members who are going to be here tonight except COVID got in the way. And that's only a partial list and resume. Um, tonight, I want to add one more thank you. Uh, PS 188, quiet sign. <laughs> Alex and I have had a number of discussions over the past few months about what ILR needs most. And I've also gotten input from Dave and Harry as well. The school needs great faculty to teach great students. Therefore, Abby and I are pleased to announce that we are endowing the David M. Cohen Professor of Labor Relations in the ILR School. This new professorship will allow the school to recruit and retain top talent and to expand the size of the faculty centered around the areas in our field which have been so important in my career. Thank you again for being here tonight and celebrating with us. I want, to, I want to thank David and Abby so much for uh, this generous gift. This is, uh, this is an incredibly valuable gift for us as our school. Our school is built around the faculty. And I think, you know, talking to you, the alumni tonight, I'm just reminded again of the impact over the years of the faculty teaching generations of ILR students, keeping the commitment to the quality of our school to our field. This is an investment in the future of the school and the continuation of the tradition of ILR. And this, I cannot thank you enough for uh, this incredible gift. It makes an enormous difference to the school. And now I just want to thank you all for, for being here tonight. We've got plenty more time to enjoy the uh, food, the drink, the companionship, the fellowship. Uh, Chat, enjoy yourselves, and uh, go ILR. <laughs>